of the Catholic novel. Uh, today we are going to talk about Bud Schulberg's On the Waterfront. Um, you know, all, most often what happens is a novel comes out, it's very, very popular, and then sometimes it's made into a movie. This happened in the reverse. First, the movie came out, and it is a great movie. I think I should confess at the beginning of this show, it is my favorite film. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of movies, but this is my favorite. It won eight Academy Awards. Marlon Brando won an award. Even Marie Saint won an award. Elliot Kazan won an award. And the movie was voted the best movie of the year. So uh, Bud Schulberg then wrote a novel, uh, basically the same story as the movie, except in the movie, the main character is Terry Malloy, played by Marlon Brando. In the novel, the main character is the priest, priest Father Barry, who was played by Carl Malden in the, in the film. Now, uh, Bud Schulberg was Jewish, and he learned about the Catholic social teaching from Father Bud Carradin, who was part of the labor school over at Xavier High School, Father Bud Carradin and Father Phil Carey. Now, uh, I feel personally connected because I went to Xavier High School and I remember both of those priests. So when I prepared to do this show, I opened my copy of On the Waterfront and I, I have no recollection of how this happened, but it, it's ascribed to Father Robert E. Lauder, who uh, in memory of Father Philip Carey and Father Bud Carden, who not only preached Christianity, but lived it. Uh, and then it's something like peace or God bless you. Uh, and I don't, know where, I don't know how that happened, where I got the book. I, don't, I have no recollection of ever meeting Bud Schulberg. Now then, after the novel, Schulberg uh, put the, the story on uh, the stage. And I'm one of the few people who saw that play. Uh, it just didn't go over. I thought it was great. As a matter of fact, preparing for this show, I've decided I'm going to try to get some amateur theater groups to put it on. When it was on Broadway, as you entered the theater, across the ceiling was a gigantic crucifix. And basically, the staging of the, of the uh, play was basically the, you know, the movie, just with smaller sets and so on. But still, I still thought it was tremendous. The, the novel that, that, excuse me, the first the film, the film that was made, uh, lot, lots of it was, was filmed on, on the Hoboken waterfronts. And uh, I, I heard somewhere, and I can't remember where, that Father uh, Bud Carden actually gave uh, Carl Malden, who was playing him in the movie, his hat and I think his top coat too. And Malden is magnificent. It's the best depiction of a Catholic priest in any American film except for Romero. And later in this uh, show, I'm going to read part of the homily that, uh, that Father Barry gives in the movie. It's by far the best homily in any American film ever. Now, at the beginning of the novel, in the kind of the epilogue, uh, Schulberg points out how different it is writing a screenplay and uh, writing a novel. Now, I never tried to write a novel, but I did write one screenplay, and I showed it to a few people. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I showed it to an actress, and she said that what I did, I put a lot of stuff in, like the camera zooms in here, or this is a close-up, or in the background you see a sign, Jesus saves. She said, ordinarily, that is decided by the director. So I really, I really didn't know how to write the screenplay. And the two most important scenes, I just, I just couldn't do it. I didn't, I didn't know how to do them. Um, but the uh, point that Schulberg makes is this, that in a movie you've got 90 minutes to get what you want to get across, whereas in a novel you can go on and on as much as you want. So when I read later from this uh, homily, I'm going to read as it was given in the movie, because if I use the book, I'd have to read three, four, or five pages, okay? Um, in, the, in the movie, the, the person who has been murdered is called K.O. Dugan, in the novel, he's called Runty Nolan. Why uh, Bud Schulberg changed the names, I don't know at all, okay? Uh, I've had that experience with a couple of films. For some, for some reason, they, 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 they use a different name. The homily that Malden gave, the situation is somebody has been murdered on the waterfront. And uh, Father Barry had promised that man, K.O. Dugan, that if he was ready to turn evidence against the waterfront racketeers, and even if he was murdered, Father Barry would continue the battle against the racketeers. So uh, he starts the homily by saying, 
I came down here to keep a promise. And then uh, I'm going to read, read to you parts of the uh, homily, and I'll make a couple of comments because uh, I tell you something, every time I read this, it, it, I just find it's tremendous. And I'm so happy it got into the movie because apparently the producer did not want it. He wanted to cut it. But Elliot Kazan insisted on it being there. And it's a good thing he did because it, it, it is the theme. The whole theme of the movie is the crucifixion. Uh, if those of you remember the movie, there are, there are crosses all over the place. And when I entered the Broadway theater and I saw the crucifix on the ceiling, I thought, well, whoever's putting this on knows what they're doing. That's what this story is all about. So uh, after anointing Kerr Dugan, the priest says, I came down here to keep a promise. And then he says, some people think the crucifixion only took place on Calvary. They better wise up. Dropping a sling on K.O. Dugan because he was ready to spill his guts tomorrow, that's a crucifixion. And every time the mob puts the crusher on a good man, tries to stop him from doing his duty as a citizen, it's a crucifixion. And anybody who sits around and lets it happen, keeps silent about something he knows has happened, shares the guilt of it just as much as the Roman soldier who pierced the flesh of our Lord to see if he was dead. I tell you, I find this so inspiring. I, I can't see the movie on the waterfront without wanting to be a better priest. Uh, and I, I think the novel is terrific. Just ter I, I, let me make one comment about Bud Schuberg, too. Terrific writer. You know, he, wrote, he wrote a number of terrific screenplays. Uh, he wrote Face in the Crowd, which was also directed by Elliot Kazan. So a very, very talented guy. Now, I have heard that the Jesuit priest at the labor school at Xavier High, Sc Xavier High School has such an impact on him, Bud Schulberg seriously thought about becoming a Catholic. But then he decided not to uh, because he felt he would be abandoning his Jewish people. Uh, when I read the novel, I did not know that when I read it years ago. And I remember thinking, how could someone who's not a Catholic know this much about Catholic social teaching? Uh, he, he, knew, he knew more than most Catholics I know. He probably knew more than many priests I know. Uh, how did that happen, and how was he able to incorporate it into a piece of literature without making it preaching, uh, you know, without turning it into a, a book-length homily? I don't understand that, um, and, and I don't think I ever will. You know, the, the, uh, the play, uh, Man for All Seasons, was written by an agnostic. Now, I, I, I don't understand that either. The screenplay for Brides, Even the Wars Brides Had Revisited, that I think is the greatest thing that was ever on television, written by an agnostic, that, that, that people who apparently do not have the faith are able to write literature that is filled with the faith is, is a mystery to me. Okay, so the, the, let's back, back to the homily. Uh, some of the longshoremen start yelling at the priest and throwing stuff at him, and this is what he says. Boys, this is my church. And if you don't think Christ is down here on the waterfront, you've got another guest coming. Every morning, when the hiring boss blows his whistle, Jesus stands alongside you in the shape up. He sees why some of you get picked and some of you get passed over. He sees the family men worrying about getting the rent and getting food in the house for, the, for, the kids and the ta for his wife and the kids. He sees you selling your souls to the mob for a day's pay. Uh, the, that, that's filmed very well, but it also come, comes across very strong in the novel, and, and he, uh, you know, as I said, I've, I've, I'm not reading it from the novel, I'm reading it from the screenplay. Uh, and he goes on to, you know, to name who's behind this, not, not to give names, I mean, but everybody who's involved in any way is guilty. So to read this or to, or to see the film, your own conscience gets challenged, you know, what, okay, what am I doing in my surroundings for the, with the evil that I see? Then he, go, he goes on. And what does Christ think of the easy money boys who do none of the work and take all the gravy. And how does he feel about the fellows who wear $150 suits and diamond rings on, their, on your union dues and your kickback money? And how does he, who spoke up without fear against every evil, feel about your silence? You want to know what's wrong with the waterfront? It's the love of a lousy buck. It's making the love of a lousy buck, the cushy job, more important than the love of man. It's forgetting that every fellow down here is your brother in Christ. But remember, Christ is always with you. Christ is in the shape-up. He's in the hatch. He's kneeling here, right next to Dugan. 
And he's saying to all of you, if you do it to the least of mine, you do it to me. The only reaction to that is, wow, okay? So uh, uh, the play on uh, Waterfront, I'm going to try to get some amateur group to do it. It would not be a difficult play to stage because the sets are relatively simple. Uh, I've had some success promoting some of the things we've talked about uh, in this series. For example, I got two amateur groups to put on Graham Greene's The Potting Shed, and I may be getting, at this time, I may be getting a professional group to do it. So, you know, when you think of all the plays that, that uh, amateur groups do over and over again, I mean, we've all seen 12 Angry Men. I think there's one now, t t 12 Angry People, six men and six women. And it's a true, I'm, I'm not mocking it. Please don't misunderstand me. But this, I don't think anybody <laughs> saw this play except me and, and about 100 other people in the Broadway show. And, and uh, I think it can't miss, okay? So I'm gonna try to do that. Uh, uh, in, uh, in the series of Catholic novels we've done and, and that we're going to do, uh, often there's a priest playing a key role. The, the role of Father Barry, as, as written by Schulberg, is terrific. And that's another thing, that, that Bud Schulberg, who was not a Catholic, was able to appreciate the role of a priest. Apparently he got very close to Father Cardin, and they spent many hours t together, and Father Cardin really did uh, educate him in terms of his church's social teaching. By the way, the homily in the movie is based on a talk, a communion breakfast talk that Father Cardin gave. So he, he gave, uh, I don't know whether, he probably gave the talk to Bud Schulberg, who then worked it into the, into the plot, okay? Um, you know, I think, I'm trying to think now who said this. I think it was Father Cardin and maybe uh, Carl Malden, but somebody said the set making the movie was very different. Everybody seemed to have a sense that they're involved in something special. Now, I don't remember whether they used the word God or not, but they, they, I think they used the word presence, that there was, a, there was a presence on the set different than other movies they had made. Now, I don't, want to, I don't want to start claiming there was a miracle, but I will say this, every artist in the film hits their peak. Brando was never better. Even Reese Saint was never better. Carl Malden was never better. Rod Steiger was never better. Lee J. Cobb was never better. That's pretty good. And, and Leonard Bernstein did the movie, uh, did the music, excuse me. And it all comes together. So uh, I'm, I'm guessing, uh, of course, I don't know who's watching this show, but I'm guessing that not many people even know there's a novel on the waterfront. Uh, but I, I can tell you this, I, I really believe that uh, you, will lo you will love it. It's at the, it deals with the heart of the mystery of Christ being present to us. It's very readable. Uh, you, can, you can tell you're dealing with a first-class writer. So think about it. If you, if you saw the movie, uh, you'll like the book. Uh, you, if you didn't see the movie, you'll still like the book. So take a look at Bud Schulberg's On the Waterfront. Mm -hmm.